Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this first Sunday of uh, March? All right. Nobody seems to be doing well, am I? Is that what I'm hearing now? All right. Praise God. Anyway, it doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Jesus is still on the throne. Yes. And I want to assure you that he's with you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So I just want to welcome you to this morning service with that and want to uh, appreciate you, you know, wherever you are listening to, whether in the sanctuary, whether from, you know, wherever, whatever part of the world, I just want to thank you for uh, joining us this morning. If this is your Sunday morning, I just want to welcome you specially, and I want to hope that this will not be your last. We'll have you return to come and enjoy uh, service with us. And just quickly before I start uh, my message, I just want to uh, let everybody know that we are open for service. If you want that uh, personal touch, that personal fellowship, you want to come and uh, fellowship with the brethren, we are open for you to come and share fellowship with us. Amen. And that does not mean we are ending our online church service. That is still going on, so we are doing a hybrid uh, uh, service. So uh, just to let you know that we are open and you are all invited. For me personally and especially, I really miss everybody. I wish we can all be here again. Well, God bless you. Thank you again, and God bless you. My name is Landry Omonai, and I will be concluding uh, this part of our uh, series that we have been uh, doing for a while now, which is uh, about financial freedom, all right? And I will be doing a, completing, a, co a concluding part of uh, the one we started two weeks ago on the student edition because we don't want to be in a situation where our students don't, uh, are not in lockstep with us when it comes to this. And uh, like they say, it's always good to catch them young. We, 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 <laughs> we don't want to leave anybody behind, all right? So if you followed us two weeks ago, you will know that we talked about, we started with habits, that habits are really important to financial freedom, all right? If your habit is not right, you are going to have issues. If your habit is right, then you have a chance of living financially free, all right? Because we said that uh, your habits always determine the kind of things that you will do with your money. Because if you remember, we said money has a habit, and the habit of money is a habit of the person who is in control of that money, all right? So, um, uh, we, we also said that every, mon not every money problem, but most money problems are character problems. I don't know if you remember that. That most character problems, most, most money problems are character problems. In other words, by illustration, right? If you are not a uh, patient person, guess what? You will always spend money without thinking because you are not patient. All right? If you're an impulsive person, you don't have self-control, guess what? You are going to spend impulsively, and you will always be asking, what happened to my money? All right? So your characters are really, really, really important, and we call them the habits of Jesus. And the next thing is that we said that you are a manager. Everything that you have was given to you by God, and God is making you a steward or to be more modern, God is making you a manager of that money. And in that uh, column, we had the fact that uh, money has, a, money has a, a voice. It's always speaking. You have to be able to control it. The next one is we said money has a behavior. You have to make your money behave. And then the third one is that we say money always moves. It has legs. It has wings. We saw it from Proverbs 25 that money always has wings. Money just wants to move. So you, because money wants to move, if you are not in control of the movement of money, guess what will happen? It will just go away. It will filter away. And we say the best way to be in control of the movement of your money is to have a plan, which to us adults is called a budget. All right? So um, before I go there, I just, want to, I just want to tell you, since we're talking to young people, I want to tell you that there are tools there for you to be able to manage your money. Especially those of you that are working, you're in McDonald's, you are, I mean, you're just working part-time and all of that kind of stuff. Or 
those of you who even get, you know, Auntie Sally gave you a gift, Auntie Rev did something to you, and all of that kind of stuff, right? They gave you a birthday gift. You need to be able to plan your money, and there are things outside, there are tools out there that can help you. And one of them that I love really, really well that I'm going to tell you this morning, if you want to write it down, is called YNAB. All right? It's YNAB. It's an app. You can go there. It's free. Some of them are free. If you want to do something sophisticated, then you can begin to uh, pay for that. But other than that, it's free. It's called YNAB. Another, it's an acronym. YNAB is an acronym for you need a budget. And it will just show you and let you know and help you out in just doing. Just put the numbers there and it helps you out. Another one is Every Dollar by uh, Dave Ramsey. It is to help everybody. Anybody can go there and you can use it. Anybody. You don't need any kind of education or a sophisticated education to be able to use at least preliminary. And since you guys, I'm hoping that you guys are tech savvy, you'll be able to go there, check it out, and look at it. You need to start looking at resources at this age. Because everybody that made a change, the reason why I'm so, why I'm so, you know, uh, uh, why I'm so um, uh, 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 into this is that most people that made changes in life, look at it from scriptures, for a good number of them, they started when they were young. Amen. You think I'm lying? Read the story of Joseph. He was young when he started making an impact. Daniel and the Hebrew children. They were young when they started making an impact, when they started affecting the nations. I mean, they were not 40-something-year-old. They were young guys. Even David, when he confronted Goliath, they were young. So what I'm telling you this morning is that you are not too young to start. I'm not telling you to carry the burden of the world upon your head. But what I'm saying is that there has to be a balance between you being young and between you being proactive and looking at the future. Because the future or your future actually starts now. Yes. So we'll jump quickly into the other things. The next one that you should be thinking about or you should be looking at is what? Be generous. If you are going to be financially free, you have to build or develop an attitude of generosity. In fact, it is so important that scripture tells us that just as you excel in every other thing, he said, excel in this grace of giving. Don't just think of excellence as I'm academically excellent. I'm excellent when I do chores. I'm excellent in sports and all of that. No, that's not the only place where the Bible demands excellence. From you, when it comes to your financial freedom, the Bible demands excellence. The Bible tells us, it says, just as you have become excellent in every other thing, and that is in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 8, 7. He said, try, do everything you can to excel in the grace of giving. If it is not important, the Bible will not put it there. It is really important that you excel. You strive to excel in the grace of giving giving. Praise God. Now, why should you excel in this grace of giving? Why should you be generous? Why should your heart be open? Before I tell you why, I want to let you know that generosity has to do with your heart being enlarged to serve God and to serve people. The way you can create, one of the most important ways you can create an impact or you can have an impact in life is the generosity you have with the resources that God has placed in your hands. And the good thing about it is that to be generous, you don't have to have a million dollars. It starts from the heart. It starts from your heart. It starts with a desire. It starts with a will. It starts with that, uh, 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 that desire, that drive to want to do good. So why? Why does the Bible want you to excel? Why does the Bible want you to excel? Number one, when you excel in generosity, it honors God. Amen. Proverbs 39, honor the Lord with your substance and with everything that you have. Yeah. Honor the Lord. When you want to honor God, when you want God to be honored in your life, you have to be generous. God, God, helps people who are generous to him. Number two reason why. Why should you be generous? Number two, God enjoys your generosity. He enjoys it. The 
The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. If you are cheerful, if you are giving, and you are rich in giving, if that is one area of wealth that you have, guess what? God enjoys it. It brings pleasure to him. He enjoys it. He relishes in it. Number three, why should I be generous? Number three, the Bible tells us, he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. What are we saying? Is it that it's not blessed to receive? It's blessed to receive. But the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. In other words, when you give, there's a greater impact that it has than when you receive. You know why? When I receive, most likely it benefits me only. But when I give, it benefits me and it benefits the other person on the other end. And that's why the Bible tells us it is more blessed to give than to receive. One more thing I'll quickly add is this, that I want you to know in this generation before I move on. Somebody once said, he said, your capacity to receive your capacity to be able to have, your capacity to be able to hold and retain when it comes to the things of money is for the most part commensurate with your capacity to give. I'll repeat it again. Your capacity to be able to receive and retain and to hold, right? Your capacity to be able to retain is always commensurate with your capacity to what? To give. Note that God has already blessed you. But you need capacity to be able to retain. You need capacity to be able to keep it. You need capacity to be able to hold it. All right? It's always commensurate. That capacity is built by how much of a generous person you are. Because a lot of times, what you cannot give, you cannot have. Because too many times, you are too tied to things. You are tied to the shoe. You are tied to the uh, uh, clothes. You are tied to the uh, dressing. You are tied to the makeup. You are tied to uh, whatever it is that you are tied to. All right? And you hold them so dearly to you that they become an idol to you. And guess what? When that happens, you cannot be able to receive. And I'll express it. I, I, I will say that quickly with the story I think I, I heard it, I heard it, happens in, in, it happened in South Africa or it happens in South Africa, that the way they set traps of monkeys, right, is to put peanuts or whatever the monkeys they like in bottles. And whatever they, when, whenever they, they, the monkeys go there, they put their hand in there and they grab it, but they, to be able to grab, they hold. I mean, they, they, they fold their hands, they, they lock their hands like this, right? So when they hand in the bottle, it goes in, but they can't, you know, you can't pull it out. You have to release it to leave. But a lot of times, those monkeys, because they are so greedy and they are so tied to the things that they already have in there, that even at the expense of their life, of them being trapped and being caught, they will not release what they have. <laughs> and the farmer just comes in and just walks in there and just picks them up. You know why? Because they are not open-handed. They cannot release. They don't have the capacity to be able to release. But what I'm telling you today is that as young people, you have to build that heart of compassion. Build a heart of compassion. Don't just be consumed by yourself. Be consumed by what is going on around you. Care for others. Jesus commanded us to do that. You need to look out for yourselves. You need to look out for those who are around you. You need, to be ensure, you need to ensure that everybody is okay as long as it is within your power. Now, I'm not saying, you know, be, be, you know because sometimes, let me, just, let me just put it, that there has to be a balance between, you know, oh, we feel guilty sometimes. Oh, that beautiful shoe, I cannot buy it because some people are suffering in Africa. Oh, I, I cannot eat this nice dish meal because some people are suffering in Asia. That's not you, all right? That's not it. You are playing God. However, when it is within your power, Guess what? 
you need to do all that you can do to ensure that everybody around you at least is okay because you have a large heart and a generous heart towards God. And not just people alone. You, are also, you also need to be generous to the work of God. You are not too young to be consumed by the house of God. David said, the zeal of the house of the Lord has consumed me. And one of the ways you can show that you are consumed by the, by, the, by, by the house of your God, by the zeal of the house of your Lord, is by supporting what is going on in the house of God. You need to support the cause of God. You need to support the cause of the gospel, as, even as young as you are. Are we still together? Yes. Yes. I want you to know that you are not too young to start. You are not too young to be generous. And you don't need a lot of money to show that you are generous. You need a heart, and you need to start where you are. If you have $10, split it. See, this $10 is not just going to be on me alone. Because he that is faithful in a little, if you are faithful in that $10, guess what? You are going to be faithful in much. Don't tell me I'm going to start giving when I become a millionaire. You are not going to give. I know exactly that you are not going to give. All right? If you cannot give your $10, if you cannot split your $10, if you cannot be compassionate to the people around you, I don't believe that you are going to be compassionate or you are going to give towards the, word of, the work of God. You are not too young to start all of this. All right? I'll go to the next one. Number four. You know, we, we've done three now. The third one is that generous and number four. Number four is what? Learn to put something away, which in other words is called savings for, for those of us who are adults. I know you are young. I know you don't have responsibilities. I know your parents can meet all of your needs. I know your parents care for you, but you have to start where you are. These things are practices that you need to start. Amen. If you don't know how to control your appetite, your appetite will rule you. And savings is one of the uh, uh, things that will help you to be able to control your appetite. All right? Be able to tell yourself, even though I have all these needs around me, I will still learn to keep something. Can you open to Proverbs 21.20 for me? Proverbs 21.20. Let me see what Proverbs 21.20, and I just want to read for you. Proverbs 21.20. Let's see what Proverbs 21.20 says. All right. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it all. Can you give me in uh, NLT, NLT? Let's read the NLT version too. Okay. The wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Can it be any clearer? Now, notice you are young, you are great guys, and I'm not telling you that this thing, but the Bible is telling you that if you are one of those who spends everything you get. Once it comes to your, you know, your, 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 your control, you spend everything. Guess what? It says you are what? That's what it says there. I didn't say it, right? You know, I didn't say it. It's, it's the Bible that says it. There's wealth and luxury and pleasure and treasure and all of that in the hand of the wise. But guess what? On the other hand, when somebody is acting foolishly, you will know immediately that they're the ones that don't keep anything from all that they have. Uh, one of the things that we, we, we help our, um, our two boys to do when we open an account for them when they were young, you know, we had, you know, the, the accounts were, were divided into three, and everything they had, I mean everything. My, my, my older son is in college now, and he still does that. 
all right? Anything he gets, anything he gets goes to the account and it's splitted in these three ways. There is growth, there is spend, there is growth, and there is save. Anything he gets. We started them young when they had an account. Anything they get, they put it there. Because we don't want them to be foolish and blow everything. And when I mean anything, I mean anything. If you give him $10 and it goes into that account, it's going to be split in three. Because he knows that it's only a fool that will spend everything that he has. Now, listen. I'm not saying that there are times that when you have a need or there's something for you to use money for. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you have some extra money, when somebody gives you, or when you start working, whether part-time, whether all those kind of things, make sure you plan your money out. Leave something for the reserve. Why do we need to leave something for the reserve? Listen to what it says. Because it helps a, it helps to have enough for what is important. There are so many things that are important in our lives that we need money for that we spent the money that we were supposed to use for it before the need arises, right? Because we're not patient enough to set something aside. Why? Because we think that everything that just comes into our minds as young people, as students, as kids, anything that comes to our mind is important. But that is not true. That's not life. That's not real life. There are times that certain things will be important for you. And you need to be able to put something down. And again, I'll go. I, I, now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the kind of person that just, you know, I, I'm not just, I'm just using my own lifestyle as an example. I'm not trying to, you know, praise anybody or this thing. You, you know my heart, right? All right? Like my kids, part of the things I would tell them, right? Those monies that they save, right? There are certain things that are important that you need to keep money for that you have to be responsible for in some ways because they have been able to keep the money. Now, that's not child abuse, all right? Okay? That's not child abuse. We're not abusing them, but we're just training them. So there are so many things that they do themselves that now, as they grow older, they have become teenagers now. Guess what? We don't need to tell them because they always know that they need to chip in sometimes. All right? So there are so many things that they need to do, and they do it sometimes even before we, before, even before we know about it. They go ahead and do it. You know why? Because we have trained them to be able to put something in reserve, and when the need arises a lot of times, you find them just go out and just do it, and then they come out and tell you. And sometimes that is, that is, that is very hardening, right? Now, for the most part, when they do it themselves, and it is something that's our responsibility, we end up giving them back that sum. We, 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 I mean, we, 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 we refund them. But for a lot of things, they go ahead and do it because they have learned that they, at certain points and at certain time in their lives, there are things that are going to be important. And we will need to be able to do it ourselves. So sometimes things like, um, you know, um, they want to pay for, you know, uh, like my younger son, when he wants to pay for his um, uh, application, applying to college, he paid, he paid some of the money before he let me know. So what I'm saying is that you are not too young to start being responsible. You are not too young to start doing the things that you need to do to be able to be financially free. Now, number two thing that you need to know in terms of uh, uh, learning to keep something or savings, why will you want to save? Number one, we say it helps to have enough for what is important. Number two, it helps you to have something for when the need really arises. When the need really arises, you will need to get something. And that is part of why you are keeping it. And then, number three, it teaches you to be patient. It teaches you to be patient. It teaches you to be patient. It teaches you to control yourself. It teaches you to be in charge of what God has committed to your care. Praise God. Number five, as I round up now, and this is really, really important, and I need you to really, really listen to this. If you have not been listening, you can go back and go and listen to uh, the, the, uh, the replay on YouTube and all of that you know, stuff, on our platforms and all of that. 
But I really, really need you to pay attention to this because when we're talking of financial freedom, when we're talking of you being free financially, there's no way we cannot talk about you sourcing money. How does money come? How do you make money? And you're not too young to know all of that. All right? I'm sure you guys are smart enough to know that money does not grow on trees, right? Money comes from somewhere. It does not go on trees. And I know also that you guys are smart enough to know that God will provide for all your needs, right? But God always needs a channel through which he can communicate finances to you. There's always the need for a channel. Like somebody said, before I said that, uh, uh, that channel, a lot of times, is work, and I'll define it. That channel is work, right? And I'll define it. Opportunities are going to come your way. God is going to create opportunities for you, but will you be ready to take it? Because it is through opportunities that God creates channels for you to be able to get to that point where you can make money. Because before you're able to manage money, you have to make money. Amen. All right? God will create opportunities for you, but are you, ready to, are you ready to hold it? Are you ready to do it? Somebody once said that opportunity is always present. It comes every time, but it comes disguised in quotes, right? Work, a lot of times. So by my definition, what is work? What is the definition of work? I would just say work has three parts to it, right? And that is what work is you creating value, number one. Number two, it could also be work. I mean, number two could also be that it is what? Adding value. And three, Solving problems. How is that relevant to you as young, as young people? You have to know that God has gifted you. You have gifts. Amen. You have talents. Right. You have all these resources that God has placed on your inside. Yes. And, it is taking the, the, and it is you taking advantage of all these gifts and all these talents and all these resources that God will use to open doors for you that you'll be able to enter into that level of abundance where you can get something and be able to bring in an abundance of money. You see, if, if you depend on people to give you money, you're never going to create wealth, right? Wealth is about creation. You have to create it. You're not getting it. You're not receiving it. Wealth is about creating it. Are you too young to start doing that? No, no, no. You are not too young to start creating value. You are not too young to start adding value. You are not too young to start solving problems. In fact, if you start now, it becomes easy and becomes natural with you as you grow older. And every time, every time, every time good money comes, it's not going to be by any gimmick, you know, all these, you know, you have all kinds of things that are going on around town, right, of money. Every time good money comes, I can guarantee you it's going to come either through you creating value, you adding value, or you solving a problem. Anytime. Anytime that comes. And like I said at the beginning, you are not too young to be able to create change. You are not too young to be able to affect the world. You are not too young to start using your mind. Use your mind. Think. How can I create value? How can I add value? What problems are available for me to solve? Money will always find a problem solver. Money will always find a, somebody that creates value or somebody that adds value. Your intention and your, uh, uh, your, your desire should be that you want to create value. You want to add value. You want to solve a problem. 
If you don't solve a problem, you can never make good money. So if you, and if you don't have that, you know, we, we, we're, not, we're not talking about uh, uh, growth in that, uh, in, that, in that regard. So uh, uh, how do we do that? Let me give, let me give you a story as I, as I, as I round up. Uh, my, I was talking with my sister because of some of the things I learned from Dr. Manze. So I was talking with my sister. She lives in Maryland. I was talking to her about it, and, all, and she, was, she said she was interested in it. She said she was interested. And she consulted uh, Dr. Amanze. I mean, I spoke to Dr. Amanze. He said it wasn't a problem. He was going to talk with her. So uh, I don't know when they, they talked. They communicated, they talked, and all of that. And he said, okay, set up a time. I'm going to let you know what's going on and all of that, how that works. And they set the time. And, but she asked Dr. Amanze, can I bring somebody? Can I ask somebody? Said, oh, Dr. Amanze said, oh, the more people, the better. And when she was going to bring that, she brought... She added one of her friends, and guess who else she added to the, to the uh, group? Her 14-year-old son. She wanted him to learn about options. And the guy sat with them, took notes, and she was telling me that the guy was even explaining a lot of things to her. 14-year-old. And listen, for this guy, it's not just, this is not the beginning, because he has started doing some deals since the age of 13, 12. Online, he's selling things. In fact, during this week, my sister called me hysterically. He gave her an idea. What was the idea? She said, when my kids were young, did I buy Dr. Seuss for them, the books of Dr. Seuss? And I, said, and I was like, no, I, you know, I didn't read Dr. Seuss, and I, you know, I definitely did not read it, and I didn't buy that for you know, my kids. And she said, oh, my son just told me that if you have it now, it's gold. You know why? Because they canceled it. All this cancel culture, they canceled some of the books that had racial undertone and all of that. So if you have those books now, you have any Dr. Seuss book, she said they are going for $600, $500, $600, and all of that now. And I'm like, oh my God, I should have made that investment since. <laughs> now, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to tell you that it's a 14-year-old kid that's coming up with all these ideas. You know why? He's thinking. He's using his brain. He's not saying, I'm too young. I'm going to wait for my mother. I'm going to wait for my dad. I'm going to wait for them to supply. No, he has started solving problems. Guess what? You think down the line, some years down the line, if this guy becomes a millionaire, I'll be surprised? No, I will not be surprised because he has started from the beginning. And if you are faithful in a little, you are going to be faithful in much. And for all of you that are listening to me, there are opportunities for you because I, can, I, I probably can hear you. I'm too young. How do I know what God has gifted me with? I'll tell you. I'll tell you how God has gifted you, how to find your gift. Very easy. The Bible just tells us, whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. If it is not your gift, if it is not your talent, guess what? At least you know that is not it. You go to something else. Nobody, neither an angel nor God, came to Rebecca and told her she was going to have an impact in the world. No. How did Rebecca become a part of the covenant? She became a part of the covenant by just doing what she can do. All she could do is do what she knows how to do, and that was just fetch water from the well. And that happened to her. And I'm telling you today that you can start figuring out what your giftings are by engaging yourself in things that are important. Amen. I will, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 okay, let me not say what I want to say, but let me just, let me just say it straight. I am so, so, so impressed by Bright Iroha. He is here every Sunday, Sunday in, Sunday out. He's like an indispensable part of our team here. If I, a lot of times, if I don't see him, I'm asking Uncle Sam, where's, uh, where's Bright? Because, you know, he's become indispensable. This kid did not start doing it yesterday. He did not start doing it when the pandemic started. In fact, I know he started doing it maybe when he was in middle school and all of that, as young as he was. And now, at this young age, he has become an indispensable part of us. So what am I saying now to you? I'm saying that figure out what you can do. 
do whatever it is that you need to do. At least if it's not working, if it's not jelly, you will know that that's not your, that's not your stuff. And then you can look for something else. But you need to start figuring all those things out because your, your gift will always make room for you. The Bible says if you see a man that is diligent in his business, he will stand before kings. He will not stand before mean men. I was so gratified about three or four weeks ago when Simi uh, Ali came too. I think she's in high school or she's in middle school or high school or something. She's just started. She's in middle school. And now she's a part of our team there. Even if that is not what she's meant to do, at least she's going to figure out something. She's going to be able to figure it out that this is not, my, this is not me and I will do it. You think if Bright or Simi and the Ali siblings, I call them the Ali triumvirate, you think if they become millionaires tomorrow, you think I'll be surprised? No, because they started young. And they're going to be able to discover and figure out where they belong quicker than when you do nothing. I'm challenging all of you. But before the challenge, I want you all to know that these are just a few examples. There are so many of you that I see here, and you're not invisible. All the things that you're doing, every service that you're doing, I want to tell you that God is happy with you. We are delighted in you. And guess what? It's a good addition to your future. Because when the time comes, it's going to be easy for you to be able to figure out your gift. And your gift will make room for you. God bless you.